I'm Pat Doris. Welcome to the story on this Monday. Things are really heating up here in Oregon in politics. The respected Cook Report has moved Oregon's new 6th Congressional District from a rating of leans Democrat to now toss-up. That comes as we examine attack ads aimed at both candidates, which makes this our big story. Tonight we're going to fact check an ad aimed at Mike Erickson. Why check his first? Well, because we're going in alphabetical order and E for Erickson comes before S for Salinas. We will look at an ad against her tomorrow night. I hope you're finding these efforts helpful, by the way. I know you have a lot of questions about these ads. They're bombarding your screens. Recently, Julie rolled in to ask, can you please do some fact checking on the political ad touting Mike Erickson as a drug user and someone who insisted on a woman getting an abortion? It seems extreme to me. It also seems like those things may have happened a couple decades ago. People change. I'm curious and interested. Thanks for your question, Julia. We are going to dig into the first part of your question for sure. Here's the ad. It does not say that Erickson is a drug user, but it does accuse him of being charged with drug possession. And it looks like someone is getting ready to do a whole bunch of cocaine there. The ad made Erickson so angry, he sued his opponent, Andrea Salinas, and her campaign for $800,000. He said that's what it's cost him to run his own ads countering the false allegation. Let's take a look at this line by line. The truth about Mike Erickson and law enforcement? Erickson was charged with felony drug possession for illegal oxycodone. The ad cites an Oregon State Police report from 2016. OSP sent me a brief version of that. The incident happened on September 17th of 2016. In the report, the trooper says he pulled over a vehicle in Hood River after he watched the driver stumble to his truck and get into the driver's seat, then failed to stay within his lane as he was driving. The driver was Mike Erickson. According to the report, Erickson blew a .12 on the breathalyzer, which is above the legal limit for alcohol, which is .08. While he was being booked into jail, a search turned up a single five milligram oxycodone pill, which Erickson said belonged to his wife. I highlighted the part where the report states Erickson was lodged on the DUI and the unlawful possession of oxycodone. And you can see down below there's a charge that says possession oxycodone. So you might be thinking, well, OK, then the report's accurate, right? Well, not so fast. Julia Shumway from the Oregon Capital Chronicle has dug into all this, and it's not as cut and dried as you might think. In her reporting, Shumway talked with Erickson's defense attorney, who said she had made a mistake in court documents that incorrectly indicated Erickson would avoid felony drug charges by pleading guilty to the DUI. Shumway found the document in question and reports that it states, DAA has agreed to dismiss felony possession of controlled substance upon tender of guilty plea. The lawyer told the Chronicle that felony charges were never on the table and that she erred when writing the document. And there's more. The Hood River District Attorney, who was elected long after all this happened, told Shumway the only thing that is a public record is that he was never, ever charged. He was never cited by the police officer with a criminal citation for a felony. And she continued, the only thing that was ever filed was that he was ever faced was the misdemeanor driving under the influence charge. Anything else? is a mistake. OK, so now maybe you're thinking, oh, even though the trooper who wrote that report after the arrest put possession of oxycodone down under the heading of a charge, maybe it really wasn't a charge. But then Shumway delivers up this. She said that when Erickson was contacted before her first story about all this, he did not dispute the existence of drug charges. He said he was cited for carrying one oxycodone pill, which he said he was carrying for his wife. The reporter quotes Erickson as saying, the judge dropped the charges for possessing one oxycodone pill after we demonstrated it was my wife's prescription. He added in a statement provided by his campaign to the reporter, I did the diversion classes required and the DUI was dismissed. I made a mistake. So what about this, though? If the candidate was telling the reporter that the judge dropped the charge, how can he and his defense attorney and the district attorney in Hood River now be insisting there never was a charge to drop? Does this all revolve around the definition of the word charge? Is it not a charge when police arrest you for something? Is it only a charge when the district attorney files that in court? Let's go for the low hanging fruit first. Under Oregon law, possession of a single pill of oxycodone is a misdemeanor. So is it accurate to say Erickson was charged with felony drug possession? No, he was not. That is false. Was he found with a pill that he did not have a prescription for? Yes, he was. 
Was that powder you see in the ad a wild exaggeration? Oh yes, it is. Late last week, Mike Erickson did an interview with Laurel Porter for our Straight Talk show, which by the way, you can find right now on our KGW YouTube page. And being the terrific interviewer that she is, Laurel asked him about the DUI and eventually about the ad. We'll show you his answers, but I want you to really watch this first one because it's quite the pivot. And a reminder here, a pivot is when a reporter asks someone a question they don't like, and so instead of answering the question asked, they answer a question that they like better. Okay, watch this. You've positioned yourself as the law and order candidate who's tough on crime, yet you're having to discuss the DUI you got in 2016 for drunk driving in Hood River. How do you reconcile your tough talk on crime and your choice to drink and drive then and your plea deal in that case? Well, first let me say crime is out of control in the state. Uh, it's rampant everywhere. I'm just sick and tired of the politicians and the, the DAs and the people out here just going through and letting a uh, slap on a hand for someone to go through and robs a store breaks into a car, whatever it is. So we need to do everything we can to uphold the laws and enforce laws in the state. I don't think we're doing a good enough job here. Yeah, so there he goes on his talking points, and I think he would have gone on for a while, but Laurel came back to remind him of the question that she had asked. I think we need to send a stronger message. But Mike, how do you reconcile that, that position with your own choice to drink and drive? I made one mistake in my life. If you look at my record, in my entire life, I made one mistake. And I, I, I I thought it was fine. I was leaving a wedding and I, I had a, a couple of drinks too many. I thought it was fine. So I made a mistake in my life. I did the classes, did the diversion, and I, I, I regret doing that. So that's the one thing I've done wrong in my life that I wish I wouldn't have, and I'm sorry about that. And now uh, you're, you're, suing, again. You're, you're suing the Salinas campaign and Salinas herself for $800,000 <laughs> over a negative ad about that drunk driving incident. You know, there are a lot of negative ads running um, in all the campaigns, it seems. Why file a lawsuit over this one? Well, it's not about the, the, the DUI. It's about what she's saying. As many viewers have seen on your TV show and other channels here, Andrew Salinas has made false accusation after false accusation in the personal false untrue statements. The Oregonian did a review of this. They called the district attorney's office. They checked the facts. The Oregonian put in their paper here just last week that what Andrew Salinas is saying is 100% not true. She's impactful, not factual at all, not factual. The district attorney's office actually called her office and said, Salinas, and talk to her. What you're saying is not true. You should pull down those ads. The district attorney's office and the Oregonian both validated that what she's saying on TV is not true. What she's doing is she's up and up negative, false lies on TV to get elected. And if that's the kind of congresswoman you want, someone who lied to get elected, what would she do back in D.C.? Well, Laurel also had Erickson's opponent on Straight Talk and asked Andrea Salinas about that ad. Let me I just say about the drug, your ad said he was charged with drug possession and prosecutors didn't actually charge him. He said in the first segment that the district attorney called you to tell you that was wrong. Uh, did your campaign make a mistake? I mean, do you have any regrets running that ad? No, I have no regrets. Um, there were three different documents, the incident report, the release report, and the plea petition that all cited possession of drugs as the charge and it says charge on there we actually flash up the incident report in the ad so i stand by what we said and how we you know how police he was not charged by the da but he was charged by state police hey. little issue with our connectivity there but i wanted to leave that in so you could see her full answer so there's certainly a lot packed into those 15 seconds of the ad and we'd love to hear your thoughts on the candidates for the 6th District. Are you considering jumping the aisle and supporting either Salinas or Erickson? Has anything they've said or done on the campaign trail changed your mind? Let us know. You can email us at thestory at kgw.com or call and leave a voicemail. Our number is 503-226-5090.